that's not in English and you're just so overwhelmed by the whole experience, but doing it is not only rewarding, it's a great way to really experience the city. So recently I made a video on solo travel and why you should do it. I've been to over 13 different countries and close to 20 solo trips and I've got seven tips that I want to share with you on solo travel. So the first thing to consider, and possibly the first thing you book when looking at organizing a solo trip, is accommodation. And for that, I would recommend staying in a hostel, especially if you're young and you've never been overseas before. A hostel is a great way to meet people. They have a lot of common areas. You'll be sharing rooms with other people and you just naturally meet other people when you're staying in a place like that. My good friend Dan, the man, had some insane adventures here. He's got some great hostel stories. He actually made a really good video on it. I'll leave a link for that at the end of this video. Now, if you don't want to stay in hostels, that's cool. I totally get it. Me personally, I was never much of a hostel person. I've always been fine to stay in hotels by myself. It's just a great way to get started. But if you don't want to stay in hostels, that's cool. There's plenty of other great ways to meet people. So the first thing you might struggle with, and honestly I think it was the first thing that I found quite challenging, is to eat out alone. It can be really weird to walk into a restaurant by yourself, especially if when you arrive at that restaurant you see everyone in there and it's all groups of people or couples or people's on dates and stuff like that, and you're going to be the only person sitting by yourself in a restaurant. It can be quite intimidating, but there's a great way to ease into that. Let's come to food courts. You can get some great food in food courts, especially here in Southeast Asia. And unlike the West, a lot of the time they're actually cheaper than normal restaurants. I got all this for around 100 baht, I think just under. That's $3. Unbelievable. Anyway, I gotta eat. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's good. So the next thing is going to a bar by yourself and it can seem super weird to go to a bar by yourself especially the first time but you'll realize the more you travel the more you do it the more people actually do this and it's quite a normal thing one thing i would recommend doing is come to one of those bars if you're a guy come to one of the bars that have all the girls hanging out the front because they'll sit down and they'll have a chat with you sometimes you have to buy them drinks or whatever but that's cool you know if you want someone to talk to and you want to have a more enjoyable experience and that's something i would definitely recommend doing and then afterwards, you might end up in a place like this. So you'll find a little bit of Dutch courage goes a long way. And just because you go out alone, doesn't mean you're going home alone. Now for females, this can be both easier and more difficult. And I need to choose my words carefully here because there is definitely the safety issue of a woman going out alone, but it's also easier for a woman to meet people. And you can meet other women, especially when you go out, you know, there's a sort of a code amongst travelers. From the people that I've spoken to, that if it's like if a girl goes out by herself and she sees other girls out hanging out, then it's sort of welcome to join and everyone will kind of look after each other. And if you're a female traveler, you can also say female only hostels and that's a great way to meet people that you can go hang out with later on in that day. And the next thing, and this is more of a tip, is to do your research on how much things should cost. So as an example, you might want to catch a tuk-tuk around the city, but you're not sure how much you should pay. And the amount that they'll usually offer you seems really reasonable. But if you do a little exploring, you realize how much you should actually be paying. So a good way to do that is to use an app like Bolt or Grab to get an idea of how much a taxi will cost. And then you can use that as leverage for when you're negotiating a price with these guys. Another thing is guides and tours and stuff like that. So you might want to do some research of how much those things could cost because you'll get people approach you and they'll offer you prices that seem reasonable if you're comparing to Western prices. But once you're here and you get to know the value of everything, you realize they're actually ripping you off. 
it's a really good thing to do before you go to a country is to look up the common scams that you will find in that country so Dan also did a really great video on that covering what happens here in Thailand and that's something that I do when I do research before going to a new place for the first time is just to find out what the regular scams are most of them are kind of the same, they're the tuk-tuk scams or the taxi scams or something like that. And they're basically just people trying to overcharge you. How much for a tour around the city? Yeah, one hour. One you hour? Shopping, you are a neighborhood, you are. Yeah? How, how much, just how much for? One hour, one hour, but 400 bucks. One hour, 400 bucks? Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. The next thing I really recommend is to take public transport. It's super daunting the first time you do it. I remember the first time I was in Korea and I took the train for the first time, the subway. I mean, the subway map is insane. It's not in English and you're just so overwhelmed by the whole experience, but doing it is not only rewarding, it's a great way to really experience the city and it's fun. It's a great way to see the city in a different way. Some of the subways I've ridden are absolutely insane. Seoul subway is crazy. Tokyo subways is next level, but it's such a cool experience. You have to do it. Now my next advice is to jump on Tinder and this is something I do all the time. I've done it in many different countries and I found it a really good way to meet people. So even if you're not single, you can use it. You can put in the description that you're only looking to meet friends and there's plenty of other people that are looking to do the same thing. I think you'll find when you go to another country, there's a lot of people that are proud of their country. They want to show you their country. They like meeting foreigners. People also want to practice English and things like that. So I've used it all over the world and it's been a really great way for me to make some friends that I still have to this day. And if you're single then, hey, you get to go on a date and that's great too, but you don't need to use it just for that. So I actually met one of my best friends in the whole world in Korea on, on Tinder. And the way we met is she wanted, well, she'd learned English and she wanted to be able to use it more. And she also wanted to show people that are traveling to Korea a bit about the country and the culture and teach things about the culture and take people out on experiences that you wouldn't normally go on, you know, if you're hanging out with other Western friends. And in doing that and in making these local friends, I've had all these experiences that I would have never had otherwise. And then the last thing, and most importantly, is safety. And this is something that just takes a bit of planning and preparation. So for example, if you're planning on bringing people back to your hotel or your Airbnb or wherever you're staying, is to make sure that you can put away your valuable items somewhere. So most places have a safe these days. If not, if you're just staying in an Airbnb in a condo, you can check with them beforehand if they do have somewhere like an office or somewhere that you can store your valuable items. And then another thing, you know, if you're going out to an area that you're not sure of, or if you're a little nervous about it, or you think something may happen, then don't take all your money. Don't take your wallet, your credit cards, and everything that you really need. You know, you can just go out with a handful of cash that's enough for you to have a good night and get home safely. And basically, just keep your wits about you. Be aware of your surroundings and know where your personal items are at all times. Now I know all these things may sound super daunting, but believe me, they're not. And if you break it down and do these things in small steps, you'll have the most amazing experience. I find for myself, anytime I get out of my comfort zone and push myself to do things like this, I have the most rewarding experiences and solo traveling is some of my best memories that I'll have forever. You know, I'm fortunate enough, I've had these amazing experiences. I've now got friends all over the world. I honestly can't recommend solo travel enough. All right, I'm going to finish the video up here. Let me know if you've been solo traveling before, if you haven't, if you have any questions, I'll try and help you out. So leave me a comment below. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. So I have a terrible idea. Actually, I've got a whole series of terrible ideas, but the most pressing one is like, I hate this thing and I don't want it here, but I'm actually just looking at it. And I'm thinking, if it was on its side and up against the wall, it could actually make quite a cool decoration piece. So I'm going to try and pull it apart. I just worry because it looks like one of those Ikea type things that you know you take them apart once and then that's it they're dead forever so uh, I'm probably gonna lose my deposit anyway so why not let's try mm -hmm. 